Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go to the papers and see what major stories are making headlines this Wednesday morning. Uh, we're starting with The Nation. Newspapers should be on your screen in just a few seconds. And of course, I'll be introducing my guest in a bit also. Uh, the big one on The Nation says, uh, Buhari's 16.45 trillion Naira budget 2022 pushes deficit to 7.9 trillion Naira. Also this morning on The Nation, killings, violence, Southeast governors revive Ibubeagu, diaspora Ibu, uh, behind sit-at-home calls. Okay, all right, also. Um, IOC's mall live in Nigeria on shore over litigations, says Silva. And uh, 180 million telephone lines linked with NIN. Education students to get 75,000 Naira stipends and PDP chairs zoning uh, to north gains more support. Once again, the PDP chairmanship zone into north gains more support. EFCC probes 155 billion naira pension fund fraud. Still on the nation newspaper, newspapers this morning, police parade 11 suspected kidnappers in Abuja. Six minors held for abduction. And um, still on the story on the budget, it says projected revenue is 8.53 trillion naira. President seeks review of MTEF, FSP, and lawmakers may get document tomorrow. Moving away from the nation newspapers, this is what the Punch newspapers has for us. It says on the teacher's new salary scale, states NUT on collision course as government cites uh, cash crunch. NUC dismisses states' excuses, says only governors against teachers wouldn't honor new scale. Ogun Ikiti have implementation on, uh, or rather base implementation on availability of funds. Benue banks on increased allocation. 11 member kidnap gang operating from Kano Motor Parks smashed. And Fanny Kayode using police to harass me, his ex wife alleges, petitions Senate. Cholera deaths hit 3,057. NCDC laments uh, death of uh, health facilities. Ogun bank worker, an accomplice nabbed for robbery and 3 million naira theft. Collaboration with Lagos relocate Apapa tank farms, Senate tells federal government. And uh, Quara PDP United set for victory in 2023, says Bukola Saraki. Also on the Punch newspapers this morning, Senate confirms Buhari's EFCC's board nominee who started school before birth. I think I should read that again. The Senate confirms Buhari's EFCC board nominee who started school before birth. Apparently, the documentation that he had presented showed that his, um, you know, the time that he started school was, you know, way before he was born. But he was still confirmed. Fun diversion. Senate panel threatens to force NSA uh, Manwar's appearance. And also, Nigeria records 6,746 cases of COVID-19 vaccine side effects. Be prepared for seven-day isolation in UK, federal government tells Nigerian travelers. And budget, federal government lowers revenue projection by 342 billion naira, six MTEF amendment. I think those are the stories that we can take on the punch this morning. Daily Independent, next. Anambra gubernatorial election under threat, says INEC. Security agencies will secure lives and property, NSA assures. IGP orders posting of uh, Echeng as new commissioner of police. Deploys special police forces to bolster Operation Restore Peace. Also on the Daily Independent, Southeast governors and leaders vow to stop sit at home to launch a Bubeago before end of 2021. PDP chairmanship, uh, governors, party leaders, and others rally round David Mark. And uh, also this morning, COVID-19, one in six young Nigerians struggling with depression, says UNICEF. Federal government okays bursary to woo students into education courses. Uh, a police nab driver who lures cano passengers to kidnappers. 2023, Okukwe declares uh, to contest for president. And um, we can also see uh, here deposition. I don't recognize Olu of Wari's authority, says Ayiri Emami. Seems to be, have uh, been some challenges uh, brewing uh, since the coronation of the Olu of Wari. And finally, on the Daily Independent, Buhari jerks up 2022 budget from 13.98 trillion naira to 16.45 trillion naira. Presents it to National Assembly tomorrow. INEC gets additional 100 billion naira for 2023 polls. 
Finally, to the leadership newspapers, Senate bans rules to allow PMB present 2022 budgets tomorrow. President returns MTEF to National Assembly for amendment, raises appropriation from 13.98 to 16.45 trillion naira. And um, also, Southeast governors move to end killings, give IPOB uh, card, or rather give IPOB red card over sit-at-home order. INEC raises fresh concerns ahead of Anambra polls. And also, Supreme Court continues a petrol union hearing tomorrow. Police parade 38 suspects for kidnapping and robbery. And um, WTD Nigerian teachers decry impact of COVID-19. Finally, on the leadership, federal government approves uh, zero import duty for vessel acquisition. These are the big stories across the papers this morning. We'll say good morning to Mr. Ademola Akingwala, publisher of the Podium Media. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me around once again. It's my pleasure. All right. Um, I think we can start the conversation from uh, the um, Southeast governors and their move to stop um, um, the, the IPOB and, of course, the insecurity challenges in the Southeast. Uh, they mm -hmm. apparently, it's on the top of the Daily Independent. It says the uh, Southeast mm -hmm. governors vow to stop sit at home to launch Ibubeago before the end of 2021. Uh, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts and how successful do you think they might be? Thank you. I think the Southeast governors uh, have just woken up from their slumber, which is good. Uh, but I think it's a little bit too late. Either to they've been playing politics with this, they've been blaming the federal government. They sat back, they enjoyed the show while they engaged in buck passing. But now that the problem is right on top of their noses, they are just realizing that they need to do something about it. Well, um, as far as I'm concerned, I don't see any credible election taking place in a number of states. We're talking about November 6th, which is barely one month from now. I don't see any credible election taking place there. Okay, and um, this is something I knew that should have been nipped in the bud long before now. So uh, I want to believe that the, the Saudi governments, they, they, they left it a little bit too late. But let's hope that something should, something would be done between now and then. But like I said, high pope and all the other um, terrorist organizations in the South, they, 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 they seem to have gained a lot of ground across those states that I do not know what the governors are going to do differently in the next one month to flush them out. Quite frankly, these are people that have been uh, having a free run, killing, kidnapping, and doing all sorts of things. So what are they going to do differently? I do not know. But good they think that they have come out openly to admit that this is a local problem that needs local solution. You now, I've always said that the state governors, local government chairman, they have a huge chunk of the blame in terms of what is going on in Nigeria today. Everybody seems so comfortable blaming Abuja. Abuja is not doing this, Abuja is not doing that. But the governors are the chief security officers of their states. Okay, so Abuja can only complement your own effort. It's good that they are going to revive Ibubeago, okay? And this is what we've been calling for, regional policing. Okay, so I will be interested in seeing what they want to do in the next one month, but I, I think it's a little bit too late, really. Uh, it's it's, it's a, also, you know, uh, key, I believe, to also mention that, you know, I, I think the South is because of the security, um, you know, apparatus that has, you know, obviously been shown to be very weak. Um, yeah. You know, there might be a lot of criminal gangs, robbers and kidnappers and whoever yeah. else, you know, who had been, you know, hiding to carry the activities may have just yes. come out now to start to, you know, to commit may um, a mayhem or cause mayhem, um, seeing Absolutely. that there's nobody checking them. I'm blaming it on, on, on the IPOB. But, IPOB. Yeah, okay. but Mr. Akibola, well, I want you to also yeah. speak on, still on Ibu Boyagu. Yeah. If the governors do not get the authority to um, arm Ibu Boyagu and give them guns, then yeah. how useful are they, seeing how <laughs> ruthless and armed these criminal elements in the IPOB or, where, or wherever else have been? With the way things are going in South East, do you think any governor needs Abuja's approval to do what is necessary? I do not think so. Look at Amatekon. Yes, they are not allowed to carry arms fully, but we are seeing some signs of um, their presence in the Southwest. Okay, so I, 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 I do not think any government that is serious 
that really wants to work should wait for Abuja to say, go ahead and arm them. Because that's a long process that's not going to happen in the next one year. You need to amend the constitution. You need national assembly's approval, all of those things. But we're talking about the fact that this is an issue that should have been nipped in the bud before it, 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 it escalated. Okay? And for all that you know, 10% of what is happening in the Southeast can only be attributed to high POB. It, like rightly said, a lot of other groups have come out, okay, ham robbers, hardened criminals, they've also come out hiding on the hypo. And, and and I think it's it's very unfortunate for government to say the state at top order is at the instance of Nigerians in the diaspora. That, that's, that's, that's been uh, cheeky, okay? How can people who are abroad give instructions to those who are at home don't go out to work, don't go on any hotel income. People don't need anybody to tell them that they should stay at home. You see how IPOB has been oppressing and intimidating people. All right. So we 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 need to begin to learn how to be proactive in everything we do in Nigeria. We don't get serious until the problem becomes a huge crisis. So I I I feel for our colleagues from the southeast, like I said, I do not see any appreciable result coming out of all this governance effort in the next one month. And INEC itself has come out to admit that the election is under threat. That is a moot point, we all know. And people are already waiting to use the violence in the Southeast to invalidate the, the result of the election that has not even been held. Yeah, so and, and, and that, have, that's a huge concern. It, it is, it is. And trust politicians, they maximize every situation. Okay, so they are already recording all this violence going on. These are the video evidences they will present in court and say, look, elections were never held, and you won't be able to blame them. And, and, and those and those who, who sadly, I, I believe that we haven't completely uh, read our electoral process of fraud. And so, you know, yes. there's still those who, you know, will take advantage of it and give themselves numbers that, did, you know, didn't exist. I mean, they're polling units. Uh, Absolutely. There's going to be voter party. You can be sure of that. People are going to be scared. A lot of people will travel out of the southeast before the election. Yet, INEC will return very high figures. And you wonder, where are these figures coming from? Who are the people that came out to vote? If you want to be living in Anambra today, would you go out to vote? No. Most people will not go out to vote. So the situation is going to make it very easy for the election to be rigged and to be manipulated. And that's going to lead to another round of violence. So it's, it's like a vicious cycle for, for the people in the South East, really. All right. Now, let's move away from there. We might come back to talking security again. But let's move now to yeah. the economy, where the president has presented, or um, well, hasn't presented, but uh, uh, mm -hmm. there's talks about the budget. It uh, makes all the papers. says uh, Buhari moves uh, the budget up to 16.45 trillion naira. Uh, 2022 yeah. budget, um, or rather, the, uh, it pushes budget deficits to 7.9 trillion naira. Um, mm -hmm. And, of course, very likely will be presented at the National Assembly tomorrow. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? And th these are well, the nations. It's, it's um, given that it will be approved, okay, if we consider the antecedents of this current National Assembly, it, whatever the president submits for a review, it's taken that it should be approved. But then, is that the solution? No. It's the easy way out for us, really. Okay? Increase the budget. The deficit of almost 8 trillion naira. How are we going to finance it? Go oh, borrowing again. Okay? So, the federal government is just being realistic. The revenue is not coming in. Expenses are going up. A lot of projects are, 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 are being contemplated. It's pre-election year. Government wants to fulfill most of its promises. Okay, ahead of the election in 2023. But my question is this, have we exhausted all avenues for saving costs? No. There are a lot of leakages in the system, there are a lot of wastages in the system, the federal government should have sat down with the National Assembly to look at how to reduce them. The National Assembly should, as a matter of urgency, make some sacrifices in terms of its allowances, emolument, and stuff like that. Public office holders across the board Let's begin to look at areas where we can reduce our expenses. Increasing the budget, at the end of the day, the impact is going to be felt by the man on the streets. It's going to bounce back. Inflation is going to go up. So, for me, this is the easy way out. It's the lazy way out. Government should be telling us, 
how am I going to cut expenses? The profile of our public expenditure is ridiculous. But nobody's talking about it. We spend so much money on elections that do not even produce credible leaders. We spend so much money feeding our public officers who do not even have value. These are areas we need to look into. But the question is, who has the political will to do these things? Nobody. Not yeah. even the president. Is it, is, isn't it, you know, um, sad, you know, that we've gone these many years and there's still not been any processes uh, that have been implemented to stop the, the leakage of funds in Nigeria. And, and, and this is across um, MDAs, you know, across the country, uh, where yeah. there's still loads of leakages, you know, where, yeah. you know, funds just disappear and never yeah. make it into government coffers. And, of course, I, yeah. I also agree with you, and, and the government's mm. need to also cut down on its expenditure um, on yeah. frivolous, frivolous um, items. Yeah, you, you you recall that one of the um, favorite quotations of, of Mr. President before he was elected was that corruption will kill Nigeria if Nigeria does not kill corruption. How prophetic that statement has turned out to be, he has not been able to kill corruption in five years. And corruption is killing Nigeria gradually. Okay, so it, 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 corruption has become a state policy in Nigeria across all levels of government. And the National Assembly, as it is currently constituted, has, has turned out to be the major hindrance for us in Nigeria. There's nothing we can achieve in Nigeria if we don't review the Constitution. A lot of need, we need to do it with a lot of stuff. But National Assembly, they are the greatest beneficiaries of the current arrangement. So I don't see them agreeing to any of these things. Public officers are so comfortable. They, they've gotten used to the huge... Um, patronage that they are getting from government, they are feeding fat on the public treasury, and they pass all the impact, they pass all the effect to the common people. So yes, corruption has become a state policy. It, 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 it's like, if you can't beat them, you join them. That is what everybody does in Nigeria. Unfortunately, we thought this president would do something about it, but he seems to have also um, resigned to faith. He has not won the battle. And that was meant to be one of his selling points. He hasn't done very well. He has not done very well. And I do not see how the next president or the next government will be able to stop it. Because it has right. been woven into the, into the fabric of our life in Nigeria, in the public sector especially. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. All right. um, still on the nation, if you can look at the top of your screen, it says the PDP chairmanship zoning to north gains more support. Uh, mm -hmm. David Mark is a front runner. And of course, um, mm -hmm. the way that the narrative has been you know, spinning lately, they say if the chairmanship goes to the north, it means the presidential candidate will be a southerner. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Kimbala, um, what are your thoughts? Well, the PDP is trying to... Uh, f um, respond to the mood of the nation. Remember last week we talked about the fact that, yes, it is not in the Constitution, but power rotation has become the unwritten rule in the political landscape of Nigeria. It, it, it's, um, it's, it's, um, it's funny when some people say it's unconstitutional, like the Northern Governor said two weeks ago, it's unconstitutional. All this while that you have been getting it, you did never knew that it was not constitutional. Now the South is asking for it, you are saying it is unconstitutional. So yes, the PDP is trying to go a step ahead, looking at the mood of the nation, especially in the South, South, Southwest, Southeast, and look, everybody wants power to come out of the South. So which means, if they've chosen someone from the North to become the chairman, automatically um, the candidate for presidency will come from the South. And I see APC also towing that line. Forget about all the Stand by it by the northern government. I see. I, I I see the APC also choosing someone from the south to contest. Yeah, how 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 do you think that will turn out or play out in twenty twenty three? If there's two southern candidates, um, you know what what would both parties be looking out for to present you know you know a better candidate and to hopefully uh, get to win? Yeah, it's, it 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 now depends on what happens at the conventions of the two political parties. Okay, if it, if if the if, if the plan goes according to the way that they want it, two southern presidential candidates emerge, then of course the votes are going to be split in the south, and the north will be the deciding factor. Okay, whoever did not vote for between the two candidates will end up being the president. But 
for the South, it's like head or tail will win. Okay, if the two parties present candidate from the South, which automatically means that 2023 will see Nigeria producing a Southern candidate. So votes are going to be split in the South, and the North, the key state, the North will be the deciding factor. It's going to be an interesting development. Of more importance to me is the quality of the candidates that we emerge from the two political parties. It's not just enough to zone into the South. Efforts must be made to go for the best candidates. If we know what's good for us, it, 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 it's not just enough to say, oh, it's my right, it's my turn, it's my region's turn. The two political parties must make conscious efforts to go for the right and the best candidates. If they, if, if they are going to put party interest above national interest, this is the time for us to begin to put merit above any other thing. Competence. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's move um, to the punch now. Um, one of the stories here says uh, 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 Senate confirms uh, Buhari's EFCC's board member uh, who's, uh, who started school before birth. <laughs> I want to believe that the Senate has done its investigation and has discovered that this chap or this man has no case to answer. Otherwise, it's business as usual. It's business as usual. Um, Nigeria is a place where people spend a lot of money to get Senate endorsement, to get Senate approval, believing that that money will be recouped. There is hardly any public officer that has not gone through the process. So, Senior screening has become just a smoke screen. It, it, it's become a ritual. It's become a routine to fulfill all righteousness. If there was indeed a very strong evidence proving that this guy has falsified his age and has forged his records, what is the essence of you going ahead to, 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 to approve him without telling us, oh, we've investigated, this is the result of our investigation, this man is clean. So it's like, Take it or leave it. I I I won't believe. I, I want to believe that Serap and other um, advocacy groups will go back to the drawing board and get more facts that would nail this guy. It's just a matter of time. All right. Now we're talking about I'm records. Um, before we move yeah. on to another story, I'm I'm going to move to the Daily Independent next. But there's something that I was spe speaking about earlier um, yeah. on top trending, and I just want to get your thoughts on it. Um, how okay. we somehow, some way, have certain persons that hold political offices in Nigeria or, you know, have some political re relevance in Nigeria, um, but have very, very incriminating pasts. Mm. Um, and, of course, the reason I'm bringing this up is because of the Pandora Papers uh, release on uh, the Kebbi State Governor um, yeah. and, of course, the crimes that he, he was allegedly accused of, you know, and, of course, the report that he was also um, in jail in the U.S. for a while, you know, for mm. just the same money laundering charges, but eventually mm. made it to become governor, was in the Senate yeah. in Nigeria, and then made it to become governor today. There's yeah. a couple of them, you know, that in the National Assembly have been governors that have had mm. drug charges outside Nigeria yeah. for a while, but made it back yeah. here and eventually still became political mm. office holders. Um, so mm. I want you to get your thoughts on, on why those things don't matter when mm. persons are contesting offices in Nigeria or hold very, very... If you remember also the story that broke concerning um, the NASCO conflicts, um, um, yeah. you know, controversy, there are certain yeah. persons that were named in that thing that had um, been arrested by Nigeria security agencies uh, mm. for links to terror and for trying to set up um, uh, terror cells here in Nigeria. Those persons yeah. eventually are still running around the country, still holding very, very delicate political offices and, mm -hmm. you know, even um, business, uh, businesses here in Nigeria. So why don't those yeah. things matter? It doesn't matter because corruption is a culture in Nigeria. Corruption is a state policy. It is assumed that everything we do in Nigeria is compromised. It is, remember, IBB once said, every Nigerian has a price. Okay? When he said it, then we all shouted, but now it is, it's been proven right. It, it, it's only in Nigeria that people with doubtful pedigrees, people with shady um, backgrounds, still end up becoming governors and senators. Why? Those who are mandated to do the screening, they don't do anything. They don't do anything. Look at this guy that has been indicted by the um, FBI, okay, Abakiari. This wasn't the first time that issues would be raised, uh, raised against him. But 
as usual, they were swept under the carpet. And I'm sure if this had happened within Nigeria, if FBI was not involved, this guy would have escaped. Nothing would have happened. So we are in a country where people steal so much money and they put part of it aside to protect their shady past. Because they know that one day something will happen. Look at Senator Adeleke. All the noise that was made about, oh, he didn't have <laughs> secondary school qualification. The man quickly went abroad to go and procure one. Okay? And because of his political weight in Osho State, remember that the case was raised against him. What has happened to that case now? It's probably been dropped because at the point, APC needed him to work for them behind the scenes. Look at Senator Iyola Mishori. There are so many of them. You said the couple, not a couple. There are so many of them out there who have a very dangerous past that we have not cared to investigate because they because they have amassed so much money. So in Nigeria, when you have so much money, then you live above the law. Nothing happens to you. Look at Fayoshi. Look at Bukola Saraki. Go to the Senate. All the ex-governors are there. Enjoy their loot. EFCC is not making noise. What has happened to Fayoshi's case? What has happened to Dino Melaye's case? Nothing. What has happened to this? Uh, other? So many of them. So corruption has become a way of life for us. So you go into government, you steal so much money, you settle those who you need to settle. It is sad. We shouldn't be discussing this on national TV, but that is not the way we are. So it, 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 it is nothing to us. It's nothing to us. You, 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 you don't have certificate. You, 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 you are accused of um, a crime 20, 50, 30 years ago. Don't worry. Still enough money, set to EFCC, set to ICPC, set to Nigerian police force, you are fine. That, that, that's just that big, because you, you look at even Tinobu, the Chicago case, up to now, what has come out of it? So there, there, there is a long list of Nigerian politicians who have had a tainted past but who are still enjoying themselves today and who will likely become public officials tomorrow. Yeah. Look oh. at this guy that died in Ogun State. I can't remember his name again. The, 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 the big guy that was also uh, accused of um, being involved in, 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 in drug crime in the United States. Yeah, I remember. What mm -hmm. happened? The guy, Obama Joe, was fighting at a point. He couldn't go to America. Look at even from our vice president article. So it's a long list. And the media also, unfortunately, the media, our constituency has been compromised. We do not investigate any longer. We try more on using press releases. How many media organizations in Nigeria, including mine, how many of us have a huge budget for investigation? People are not interested because they'll tell you if we investigate and we unhurt anything, Nothing will happen to this guy. Yeah, I, th I, think that, I think that's where the, the challenge is. You know, the fact that, yeah. you know, a lot of Nigerians and the electorate really don't see these things as big enough issues, you know, to disqualify yeah. a candidate. Yeah, I remember yeah. a couple of years ago, there was, you know, statements saying, or oh, even if he has NEPA certificate, we will vote for him. Th those were... Yeah were signs, you know, to basically tell what the, the mindset of the electorate is in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so Absolutely. even if a person has been tried for drugs and jailed yes. in the past yes. in, in a different country, yeah. it doesn't matter it to doesn't the electorate. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as he has enough money to bribe the police, bribe INEC, and also buy votes. Okay? When we complain that our votes don't matter in Nigeria, I tell people, keep quiet. You sold your conscience years ago. Why would your vote matter today? Your vote will never matter in Nigeria. Elections have just become rituals. The winners are already known. Yeah. So because we have not for once come out to insist on the right thing being done. You leave the neighborhood, you know that this guy has criminal tendencies, but because he has so much money, he has settled everybody. Of course, that's, that's what you vote for. A situation whereby people who had very terrible past won elections against people who have integrity. Only in Nigeria would that happen. Because a professor going to contest an election will probably don't have enough money to buy votes. But a businessman who has been government before has so much money to, I mean, to, 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 to throw around. That is the person Nigerians will vote for. He has money. So it, 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 it sometimes has become a culture for us. We don't see anything wrong in those things.
All right. Um, let's now move and talk a little bit about COVID-19. There's a couple of stories here. Um, on the Daily Independent, one of them says, COVID-19, one in six young Nigerians suffering, uh, struggling rather with depression. And that's from UNICEF. Um, I think one of the, st uh, the papers also rep um, speaks about uh, uh, vaccine reactions. Uh, to, you know, here in Nigeria, about six, uh, 3,000 or so people have um, mm. had uh, certain vaccine reactions. I'm not sure where, where paper that is. But quickly share your thoughts yeah. on, on the depression story. Depression is real in Nigeria. Depression is real. That's why when Facebook went off for over eight hours, uh, on, uh, I think it was, that was on Monday, I'm sure Nigerians would have felt it the most all over the world. A lot of Nigerians, they sleep, in quotes, they sleep on social media as a way to let off steam, as a way to get over depression. There's no job, business is slow, no electricity, a lot of stuff. People are going through a lot. So depression is real in Nigeria. I want to believe that that figure is even understated. It's really understood. You see a lot of people wearing good clothes, but they are going through stuff that they can't even discuss. Unfortunately, there's no social safety or social security net for anybody in Nigeria. When you rise in Nigeria, you rise for yourself. When you fall, you fall for yourself. And there's nothing to fall back upon. Nothing, absolutely. No, no, no arrangement by government to help people to go through difficult period. None. So depression is real. You look at parents who've lived all their years. They've worked for government. Now they are retired in their 60s. They can't even get their pension. The little money they have, they are spending it on themselves. They are spending it on their children who are unemployed. I was telling someone at the NYSE, I mean, work, it was on this program, that you waste almost two years of people's lives in the name of going, to, going for NYSC. Two years that they should have been spent working and earning income and supporting their family. So people are really, really depressed in Nigeria. It's, 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 it's real and it's just so unfortunate. It's real. And on, on the, on the COVID-19 case, yeah. I, I... Yeah, let me just I, share. I, I, it, I, said, it says Nigeria records 6,746 cases of COVID-19 vaccine side effects. I have heard a couple of people complain that, oh, I won't take this vaccine because of his side effect. Yesterday I was talking to someone who said no, that he has seen physical evidences of people who suffered side effects. Nigeria is a place where we don't keep records, unfortunately. Medical records are not reliable. Okay. Uh, there could be some coincidental um, side effects. Someone who, who already has uh, some comorbidity, somebody who already has had some medical issues, it takes it takes the vaccine, the vaccine probably pushes out those issues and it tries to link it to COVID-19. What I'm saying is that this information is not enough to discourage people from getting the vaccine. It's, it's, it's not. At the end of the day, the benefits of having a of, of, of going and I to take the vaccine, the benefit has way so called side effects. Right? So that's, that's my own point. I, 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 I'm not going to argue or deny the fact that there are side effects. I've taken my complete dosage. Nothing happened to me. Glory to God. But if there are. Which, people, which of the uh, vaccines did you take? I, uh, Pfizer. Pfizer, okay. I took okay. Pfizer, yeah. Which is one that is really most recommended in this part. And I'm not sure Pfizer is ready like we in Nigeria. I think we have Moderna and we have AstraZeneca. A brother of mine took his last week and for three days he was, he was it himself. Yeah, I had I had similar side effects. I mean, for yes. my first and second dose, um, I had, yes. you know, slight fever. My arm hurt, yes. you know, for about a whole yes. day and, yes. and all of that. But yes. it, it doesn't go beyond two days of just that feverish. Yes, uh, so feeling. those who are all, all normally elderly people, you won't mean second day, third day, you are fine. But if anything more than that happens, it means that person already has medical issues that he is not even aware of. That's yeah. the point I'm trying to make. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, what's what's most important is the information sharing concerning COVID-19 and how the National yes. Orientation Agency, the uh, NCDC, needs to do better with the yeah. information that they put out, you know, to get people yes. to understand better how the vaccine works. 
um, Absolutely. To, to stop vaccine hesitancy. I, I want to share, uh, let's move to the Daily Trust newspaper. We didn't get to touch on this okay. before, but this is very yeah. interesting. And some of the things that um, we haven't spoken about this morning, mm -hmm. it says pressure mounts on Buhari to probe Bagudu and Peter Obi and others. Um, and yeah. that's with regards Pandora Papers and um, yeah. what has so far been you know, exposed. There's still eight more yeah. Nigerians to go. Um, mm -hmm. You know, on the list, you know, the names haven't been dropped yet, but, you know, from, from the records, it says about 360 plus persons across the world, and, yeah. um, you know, have been you know, put on the Pandora Papers investigation. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And of course, they are in different countries. Nigeria has 10 mm -hmm. persons of interest, Peter Obi yeah. and uh, Bagudu of uh, Kebi State Bagudu. currently. Yeah. Um, do you think, the, well, and I think it's one of the reasons I even asked the question about why doesn't, why don't these things matter to the Nigerian electorate? Um, but yeah. do you think that these are important enough for the Nigerian government to look into? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 I mean, by now, I should expect a memo to have landed on the table of the EFCC chairman to say, look into this, do a thorough investigation. And some people will tell you that how come it took <laughs> the Pandora box, just like we had it with WikiLeaks, how come it took such effort? for us to even be hearing of all these things, okay? Without prejudice to what the investigations would, 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 would discover, Peter Obi, as far as we are concerned, is a clean man, modest, who doesn't have anything, all right? But this is information that is fresh, that is new, is telling us something different. So yes, the Nigerian government should be very interested in getting to the root of this. Apart from the um, advocacy groups that, that would naturally latch onto this. I expect the FCC to, 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 to start work. I expect the LCPC to yeah, start work. Well, so, so, so um, I, I think also, you know, that a lot of these things, you know, were, you know, go, were meant to work on the sentiments of Nigerians and how they react, even before yeah. they read, you know, deep, deeper into some of these stories. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, you know, had clickbait headlines, you know, just to yeah. catch your attention. Um, yeah. And if you read, read closer into it, they had, they had very, very, very different stories. Peter Obi's own mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily say that he stole money from anywhere. It really just yeah. says that he set up shell companies for tax avoidance, not yeah. um, 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 uh, uh, tax evasion, mostly mm -hmm. tax avoidance, that yeah. apparently a lot of businessmen do across the world, set up shell companies to avoid tax. You know? And so yeah. um, what I think would be important to know is whether those funds were truly from his businesses, which he has never hidden. Uh, he has always exactly. you know, been known to be a rich man. The only problem that yeah. we had with him was he was very tight-fisted and yeah. <laughs> never allowed people to take uh, an Ambra State money you know, recklessly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, what I think, you know, would be important to, you know, speak about with regards to his case is, you know, knowing mm -hmm. whether those funds were taken from Anambra State or not. And if they weren't, then he really doesn't have a case exactly. to answer, except with uh, the Code yeah. of Conduct Bureau. And if he yes. declared those yeah. um, um, sh um, uh, funds that were outside uh, Nigeria. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, you, 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 you're very correct. It's too early to begin to um, assume that this has to do with his tenure as governor of Anambra State, even 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 for Pagudu. So let 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 the investigation start and let the process very open and transparent because these are the things, these are the the, the building blocks of Nigeria of tomorrow. We cannot continue to 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 sweep very serious issues under the carpet. We cannot continue to ignore issues that have attracted global attention. If we want to incorporate the right values in the young ones, values of discipline and anti-corruption, it is the time to begin to investigate and make scapegoat of whoever it is, is found culpable. So yes, let the pressure continue. By now, I expect the federal government to have said, EFCC, ICPC, Board of Conduct Bureau, please go to work and let's get to the root of this. All Hopefully, right. something will happen. Yeah. Um, still on the Daily Post, it says here, 30 killed. Uh, as Ansaru terrorists and bandits clash in Kaduna. Yeah. yeah. You know, we said here last week that the Kaduna state government, by, the federal government by now should have declared the state of emergency in Kaduna state. Enough has happened in Kaduna state to warrant the federal government moving in. The governor needs help. Unfortunately, he doesn't admit, he doesn't realize that he needs help. He's busy playing politics, he's, he's busy um, um, grandstanding. He needs help. There are about three or four sources of crisis and insecurity in Kaduna. Two weeks ago, it was the Shiite 
we have the schools kidnapped, then we have this uh, group of clashing also. So yes, it's time for the federal government to move in and do something about Kaduna State before it gets worse. Well, look um, at Kano State. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, mean, I was just going to say, you know, th that would be yeah. when, you know, we have a federal government that understands that 30 lives lost in a day is you know, it, not normal in no, any way. It's not. You know, neither is it's, 200 it's kids kidnapped. Yeah. It's not. I mean, I mean, it's only in Nigeria that even when you hear of road accident, 18 people killed. If such happens in developed world for the next one week, radio and TV, they will be on the. Something must be done. Whoever was responsible, we brought to book. But in Nigeria, we report it and we just move on, waiting for the next casualty, waiting for the next um, incident to happen. 30 lives is a lot. It's a lot. Enough for the State of Assembly to, to impeach the government. You are not doing anything. You are not doing anything. You are, you, you are voting to protect lives and property. In Kaduna State, only God knows how many people have been killed in the last one year, in the last two years. And the government is there sitting pretty, and nobody say anything about it. I mean, we need to begin to bring people, uh, I mean, to make them accountable. The Act of Assembly should, 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 one of the reasons why you can impeach a public officer is inability to protect people's lives. These are lives that you don't know what they will become tomorrow, but we keep wasting them because it has become a norm that lives must be lost in Nigeria one way or the other. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. That, pff, yeah, be, someone like El Rufai by now shouldn't be a governor if we know what we are doing. But I do not see exactly what is done. No matter the project that you do, the biggest project any government can have is to safeguard the lives of the people. If you like build, flyover, build stadium, construct road, if you can maintain security of lives of property, you are failed as far as I'm concerned. That's the number one thing that we should be looking at. So for me, Kaduna requires immediate and urgent federal government intervention yeah um also you know uh, you know some of the things that you mentioned it's yeah. aside the federal government's um you know and the way that they value the nigerian life you know i think yeah. the nigerian people themselves have also yeah. gotten so used to hearing about death and killings in dozens yeah. and in hundreds that these things no longer matter on that level and you you if, if, i'm very sure that if, you know, the governor of Kaduna State was running for election next week, after these stories break, he will he still win. get a lot of people comp campaigning for him. And, and oh, voting yes, for him. So, we, we, we have very short memory in Nigeria, whether by design or by default. We have very short memory in Nigeria, especially when it comes to public officers. We, we are too forgiven. I mean, we are too forgiving of their sins. You will find people who are ready to justify, who are ready to rationalize, who are ready to defend him. Oh, there's insecurity in Nigeria. It's not just Kaduna State. Let, don't let us single him out for blame. But when we don't single people out for blame, when we don't deal with them on a case-by-case -case basis, then you have an aggregate of problems all over the country that we end up not being able to handle. The local government chairman doesn't perform, we pardon him, we overlook it. The state governor doesn't perform, we, we, we. So when are we going to hold public officers accountable and responsible in line with the oath of office that is war? When are we going to do that? We're talking about 30 people, for God's sake, 30. It, 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 it's mind-boggling, seriously. And like we are like said, even as a nation, we've gotten used to it. Nobody's talking about it. That's really sad. Really, really sad. Um, I, I, we can now go back to the southeast, you know, and get to understand these things better. Um, yeah. On the Daily Trust, it says uh, Igbo's in diaspora, not IPOB, behind sit-at-home order, says the southeast governors. Um, and yeah. I think uh, you, uh, you already spoke a little bit about this before, you know, but I'm trying to understand yeah. where exactly they are coming from. I know that there is um, certain elements um, yes. in, in Cyprus and in different countries across the world who have taken yeah. over... Um, putting out media statements after Namdekano was arrested. Uh, they basically, yeah. I, I can't remember, there's a particular one who is even contesting the election in the country that he is in. Um, mm -hmm. Probably in Cyprus, I think. But he, he has yeah. been one of those voices that have been, you know, encouraging um, some of the actions yeah. of the IPOB and asking, you know, people to boycott elections and some of all of that. 
Um, yeah. And, and so do you think the governors do have a point there, you know, seeing that there are certain persons like that um, outside Nigeria who have been spewing these same um, narratives and, you know, encouraging people to sit at home and also encouraging, maybe, encouraging the IPOB members back home, um, yeah. you know, to commit the atrocities that they're committing? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. That IPOB and other groups in the South East have been receiving massive support from Nigerian diaspora. But it is the same thing in the Southwest. Amateku, Ghani Adams, Sunday Bo, they have a lot of supporters in diaspora. In fact, there are a lot of WhatsApp groups where they are raising funds to support people in Nigeria. They are, they, I mean, there was one that someone added me to. I left almost immediately because I know that a lot of people back here in diaspora, they are so concerned about what's happening back home, and they believe that the only thing that they can do is to support any attempt to effect a government change, a regime change. So yes, people in diaspora, they have impact. They, they, they have a direct impact on what is going on in the Southeast. But hey, is that enough reason for the government to throw its hands up in, in the air and say, oh, we can't do anything about it? No. It is not peculiar to the Southeast. It's happening even in the Southwest. A lot of Yoruba uh, advocacy groups exist in diaspora, supporting what is going on back home, sending money, okay, organizing quite a lot of stuff. So that's not enough for a particular state government to say, oh, even in the North, the federal government has asked us to say, Boko Haram, they have very powerful and influential sponsors outside Nigeria. So terrorism all over the world is, is usually funded by people outside the country. So that's not new. Yeah. It, 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 it's always been, even the U.S., even all over. What we are saying is that as a state government, that is not enough reason for you to fail in nipping the issue in the body. Yes, of course, there are sponsors. People send money to them. Look at NSAS. NSAS was funded significantly by Nigerians in diaspora. Remember, a lot of money was raised online in a matter of hours. So that has been the trend. Nigerians in diaspora, they want to do everything to make their country better, and they believe that the least they can do is to support those who are fighting, okay, those who are seen to be advocating for things to be done properly. So it's, 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 it's nothing new, and it's not enough reason why we shouldn't be able to fight yeah. um, um, this guy to a standstill. Yeah. Animala Kimbola, always a pleasure yes, speaking with you. Thank you very much you. for sharing Thank your you time so with us this morning. And we wish you a Thank beautiful you. day ahead. Thank you for the privilege. Absolutely. Have a lovely day. You God too. bless you. Thank All right. You. Um, stay with us. Uh, We're now moving back in history. The 6th of October, and I'm going back to the year 2010, 11 years ago, one of the world's most famous social media apps, Instagram, was founded on this day. If you remember two days ago, you know, there was panic across, the, you know, Nigeria and across, across the world when Facebook had its uh, challenges and Instagram shut down, WhatsApp shut down, uh, Facebook also. Um, um, the app basically has become one of the most famous across the world, one of the most used across the world, and was eventually bought for a billion dollars. Um, I'm going to confirm what year that was by Facebook, um, seeing how fast it was growing. started with about 100,000 um, subscriptions and then has grown to more than a billion subscriptions, I believe. Um, it's an app that was launched on this day and racked up 25,000 users in just one day. The primary focus of that of the app when it um, started back then was to feature photographs, especially those taken on mobile devices. And it was only actually launched on the iOS uh, platform when it launched. At the end of the first week, it had downloaded. It had been downloaded more than a hundred thousand times. By mid-December, the number of users had reached one million. Um, it was uh, the fourth most downloaded mobile app of the uh, 2010s. Um, um, just a little bit of history for that. And also, I'll quickly share. Um, uh, more. Yes, in April 2012, it was bought for a billion dollars in cash and stock by Facebook. Um, originally launched for just the iOS, it eventually um, it was able to work on Android phones a couple of years later. Uh, two months after it was uh, um, launched, it had a million followers and 10 or million subscribers and 10 million subscribers in a year. By June 2018, Instagram had 1 billion subscribers. Um, and just you know, sharing a little, little bits of uh, uh, this and that here and there.
Um, of course, it started with just photos and then moved to being able to share video content. Um, it started with maybe, I think, 15 seconds video content, and now you can share video content of as much as 10 minutes, even, even more, um, hours even, of video content on Instagram. Reels have also come up on Instagram to make the usage more interesting. Um, but on this day, in the year 2010, Instagram was founded. Stay with us, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're talking zoning across Nigeria. How important is that discussion as we move closer to the 2023 general elections? <laughs>